welcome back to my channel. Thank you so much for subscribing, for your support, for liking my videos, for commenting, for sharing my videos. Thank you for your support. I really appreciate it. We're back again with another courtship class. Now, it's important to understand what sex is before you enter into courtship, before you enter into a relationship or if you're dating. It's really important that you understand this. Now, you need to stay with me so that you understand why I'm saying this. The devil cannot succeed in tempting you in something that you truly understand. But if you don't really understand what it is, you're likely going to fall into the trap that Eve fell into. She was deceived and she sinned. She was deceived trying to explore. She was deceived trying to discover something that she didn't know. She was trying to understand it more. But then she fell into sin, she fell into a trap. And that is what temptation does. And one of the weapons that we have over temptation is understanding. The Bible says the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. And knowledge of the Holy One is understanding. So if you have knowledge, knowledge comes from the Word of God. If you have knowledge from the Word of God, you will have understanding. And if you have understanding, you will have wisdom. And if you have wisdom, you have the fear of the Lord. And the fear of the Lord will keep you from a lot of temptations, a lot of traps that many people are falling into. So in this particular video, we want to understand what sex is. The biblical sex that God created. For God created it. And it's important that you understand it before you enter into courtship. Here in the UK, children are being taught about sex from the ages of 11. Um, here we call it year 7. In year 7, this is the age group of 11 to 12 year olds. So the education system is teaching our children about sex. And here we are as Christians snoring and sleeping and we're waiting for the education to tell our children something that God created, to help them to understand something that God instituted and established. How can the education system teach our children the truth about something that God created whom they don't believe in? The education system cannot tell us the full truth about something that God instituted and established in marriage. It's impossible. They will only tell us a condition and artificial explanation of what it is. They cannot tell us the deep truth because the deep truth is only discovered through the Holy Spirit and through the Word of God. So. We also have Hollywood here trying to teach us about what sex is. The music industry, the movies, pornography, all these kind of things. They're trying to give us a picture of what it is. But in the end, it's kind of a distorted picture, if not a perversive picture. You know, it's so perversive that they're saying it's okay for a man to sleep with a man as long as they use a condom. That is perversion. That is not the biblical sex that God created in marriage. It's so important that we do not allow these systems to condition our minds and give us an understanding because that understanding is perverted, is distorted. We need to understand what it is through the Word of God. And if they're telling our little children as young as 11 years, how much more you and me, how much more do we need to know the truth about it? This is why I have to make this video. And this is why it's so important for you before you enter courtship before you start dating that you understand the biblical truth about sex some of you today are looking at pornography you're trying to discover what is it but pornography is not going to tell you the truth you're looking into songs you're looking into different kinds of things you know different books but they will not tell you the truth God created sex he established it in marriage and it's only through him it's only through him that we'll have understanding it's through his word through the Holy Spirit so today we want to look at my favorite favorite book in the Bible and my favorite couple ever in the book of Genesis chapter 2 verse 24 which says therefore shall a man leave his father and mother and shall cleave unto his wife and they shall be one flesh. Now I love the scripture because this gives us the full formula of sex in marriage. From this illustration we can see that God has a very high view of sex. He expects the husband and the wife to leave and to cleave and then be joined as one flesh. The act of sex is actually the final act of self-giving. So therefore shall a man leave his father and mother. 
The word leave is actually written in Hebrew as azam, which means to let go, to abandon, to forsake. So here the man is being told to forsake, to abandon, to leave his father and mother. And then it tells us the next part, that he needs now to cling to his wife. The word used for cleave is dabak. This actually means to cling, to keep close, to follow closely, to join to. So this man is being told to abandon, to leave, to forsake his father and mother. And then he needs to cling to his wife. He needs to follow closely. He needs to keep close and he needs to join to his wife. And then the last part it tells us, and the two then shall become one flesh. God expects the man and the wife to be socially accountable to each other first before anybody else. And then God expects the man and his wife to give a personal and an emotional duty of clinging to each other, of joining to each other, and then they shall become one flesh. Now the one flesh means having sex. But now the problem we have is people are having sex, but they have not left their father and mother. They have not clinged to a wife. They don't even have a wife. So if you're having sex and you're not yet married, that means that you are sinning against God. You're sinning against your body. You are taking advantage of this act of self-giving because you're not doing it in the way that God positioned it to be. God created it to be in marriage. This is why he said, leave father and mother. So when you're having sex, what are you doing? Because when you do this outside the will of God, it doesn't open doors of blessings. You know, you can say, well, this guy that I'm courting, we're going to get married anyway. So we might as well just have sex. But you're still outside the will of God. This person is not your husband. This person has not left their father and mother. This person is not clinging to you as his wife. You're not clinging to him as your husband because you're not yet husband and wife. So what in fact happens is when you do this, it opens doors of curses. It opens doors that the enemy can come in and bring curses into your life. This is why so many people are insecure. This is why there's no peace and there's no harmony. There's no order because they are doing it the wrong way. Even today we have people rushing to get married, but they're not yet ready to leave their father and mother, you find that we inside that marriage, their parents are still influencing all their decisions. Their relatives still influence everything that they do. So they've not yet abandoned their father and mother. They've not abandoned their family, but they're still clinging onto the family. So when the wife tries to make a decision, she's shut down because maybe the mother-in-law, the father-in-law is making all the decisions in that marriage. You see, now when they have sex, sex no longer brings the blessing that God intends in that marriage. You see, sex is meant to bring a blessing in marriage when it's done the right way. And the right way is to leave and to cleave. It's just the final act of that. You see, Hollywood tries to tell us, tries to make us to focus only on the artificial side of it. Oh no, this is the side of how it feels or how it looks, but it's more than that. It's deeper than that. You know, it is God who created this. It is God who established it. So how can we come in and say we need to do it this way, we need to do it that way, when God has truly said, leave, cleave, then become one. Unless you leave and cleave, it's going to be just an activity that you do. There is no bliss, there is no joy, there is no peace, there is no happiness. There is no fullness that comes from God. There is no full blessing that comes from God because you've not done it the way that God established it to be done. And so this is why you need to understand what sex really is when you're courting so that you don't fall into a trap. So that you know that this is more than the final act of giving yourself. This is more than the act of becoming one. I have to leave. I have to cleave. But how can I do that if I'm not married to this person? How can I do that when I'm not prepared to leave influence for my parents? To leave influence for my relatives? How can I do this when I'm not prepared to give all my secrets? When I'm not prepared? You know, there are some people today that are still hiding in passwords from each other. They have not yet cleaved to each other. There are still secrets in their marriage. You know, you need to be able to be a person that has no secrets. So can you leave? Can you cleave? Or are you just prepared to have the final act of self-giving? To partake in the act of becoming one? 
you don't even know what becoming one means because you're not giving the final act. You're not giving yourself because you're abusing the gift that God created for marriage. In fact, when you do this, you become a liar because you're saying that I've left my father and mother and I'm clinging to my husband or I'm clinging to my wife. But that person is not your husband. That person is not your wife. So in fact, you become a liar before heaven. When heaven looks at you, it sees you as a liar and that opens a door in the spiritual realm for the enemy to attack you any way that he can. You cannot limit sex to a one night stand. That's a lie of the devil. It can never be just a one night stand because soul ties are created. This is why it's only appropriate for a husband and a wife. The devil comes and tells you that, oh, you can just sleep around. You know, there's no commitment. You won't catch any feelings. Nothing will happen. But then you're left empty. It's meant to bring a blessing, but instead it takes away from you. You're left feeling empty. You're left feeling hurt. You're left feeling damaged. You just feel like there's something missing because each person that you sleep with outside marriage takes away from you. They don't give you anything, but they take away. You see, the enemy has lied to men that, you know, you can just sleep around with as many girls that you want. But this is not about being a man or a woman. Any person that does it outside the will of God, they are robbed of the blessing of God. Instead, doors open for the enemy to attack them from left to right. This is why marriage is really serious. And this is why it brings so much blessing. Now, if you focus on the right things, you can prepare yourself. Prepare yourself in such a way that when you enter marriage, you will no longer be influenced by your father and mother, but you'll be influenced by your wife or your husband. Prepare yourself in such a way that you'll be able to cleave to this person with all your heart, all your soul, all your strength. Prepare yourself because so many people are rushing into marriage because they want to have the final act of self-giving, but they're not prepared to give themselves in all the other ways of leaving and cleaving. So. I hope this video is very helpful for you and I hope it brings your understanding of what sex really is and you know it's not something that you can just say I'm just gonna have because I'm courting this guy and we're gonna get married anyway or I'm gonna have it because I feel I can't control myself well you can control yourself it's not something that you will discover watching pornography it's not something that you will discover reading a book it's something that the Holy Spirit has to give you understanding. So you need to ask the Holy Spirit, give me understanding of what this really is. Study the Word of God. God wants you to understand the truth. It's not, this is not something you need to be shy about. This is something you need to know for your good, that you don't fall into the same trap that he fell into. You need the truth of the Word of God. And remember, if you have sex and you're not yet married, that means you're sinning against your body. That means you're walking outside the will of God. And this opens doors for the enemy to attack you. This causes soul ties and it causes so many problems and issues that will affect you in the long run. And you need to understand these things. And we'll cover this in another video. We'll cover the implications of what happens when you have sex outside marriage. So I hope this video really blesses you and I hope this video gives you understanding. And if you have any other questions that you really want to know, please leave them in the comment section. I'll try my best to, re to reply to you. So God bless you and thank you so much for watching. Bye. Before you establish a relationship with a man or a woman, it's so important that you establish a relationship with the Lord Jesus. By establish, I mean that you actually have a relationship with Jesus Christ. Because you cannot afford to have a relationship with another man or woman if you don't have a relationship with Jesus Christ.